Hey guys, Pat Kelly here, Mad River Outfitters. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're gonna to be doing another variation of Blaine Chocolate's Game Changer. Today we're gonna to be tying the Polar Fiber Game Changer from Blaine Chocolate. Um, this is kind of the next up in the series of Game Changer videos that we're doing. We had a lot of requests, um, so we're gonna go ahead and knock this one out. <clears throat> I'm going to talk a little bit about the materials real quick that we're using before we start tying. Um, the main body of the fly is going to be tied using the uh, polar fiber brush from uh, Renzetti. We're going to be doing the pattern in all white with, uh, with a pink head today just to keep it simple, but you can uh, obviously blend and do really any color combinations that you want. Um, the sizes that we're going to use are, there's three sizes uh, really in total for the polar fiber brush. In this video, we're just going to use two. We're going to be using the, the three quarter inch brush and the one and a half inch brush. Um, they do make the polar fiber brush up to three inches. That's the largest size, but today we're just going to be using the three quarter and the one and a half. We're also going to be using a couple different prop materials um, today in this pattern. So what the props do when you're tying these game changers is uh, the props kind of serve as a, a function of controlling the taper kind of in combination with the, the length of the body material. The props are going to allow you to control the angle of your body material to, to help you shape taper in the fly. So two different props today. Uh, we're going to be using the uh, chocolates finesse chenille um, size medium. We're also going to be using the finesse chenille in size large. <clears throat> and just kind of progressing, we're going to switch over using the larger prop as we get farther forward in the fly. And then once we get to the, the front portion of the fly, we're going to switch over to the chocolates filler flash. So with all these new, you know, synthetics materials out there, especially kind of specifically made for game changers, it makes this process a lot easier um, than it had been in the past. So, all right, we're going to jump right on into it. Um, today we're going to be doing a uh, just a basic marabou tail. You can just use some strong white marabou. Go ahead and get this guy tied in. As far as length, um, never really measured it, but let's just say we have a 10 millimeter spine in the vise. That's how we're going to start out. Let's just say we're going to go with roughly, you know, three, three 10 millimeter shanks worth. That's uh, about what we're going to shoot for for our tail length. So go ahead and get that tied in. Start at the eye and then bring your thread all the way back on the, uh, on the shank there. By starting at the eye and working your way back, tying that material in is just going to ensure that we have a nice smooth, even foundation on this shank to work with. You know, if you tie everything in right at the rear section of the fly, you'll just end up with this little bump that's kind of hard to work around. So when you start that tail, just lock it in right up at the eye and just walk your thread back over the material towards the rear section of the spine. All right, once we got that locked in, if, uh, if you want to add some flashaboo at this time or something in your tail, you don't have to, but if you want to add some flash, this would be the stage in the fly to do that. I'll go ahead and just... I'm going to be using some pearl uh, lateral scale. I'm going to just kind of double it over around my thread just so it doesn't pull out. Makes it a little bit more secure. Bring that in towards the back there and then I'll cut this just a little bit longer than the actual tail is just so it sticks out just a little bit. All right. Now we're going to go ahead. Now on this tail section, we're not going to use any prop material whatsoever. The reason for that is we want our polar fiber to lay pretty flat. You know, we really don't want any lift at this stage in the fly whatsoever. If you're looking at a bait fish, kind of that portion just in front of the tail, you know, you can call it the wrist if you want. Um, it's really the smallest portion of the bait fish. So here we want our brush to lay relatively flat. So no, no prop material here. Just tie in your, your three quarter inch polar fiber brush. Really don't need any more than just a couple of wraps too. We don't really want to, uh, get too much bulk in this portion of the fly. So lock the brush in, go ahead and wrap it forward. As you're wrapping, just like if you were wrapping a hackle, you want to kind of preen those fibers rearward. 
And on this section, I'm really only gonna do two complete wraps. Keep things nice and sparse. When you go and tie this material off to, try to pull away some of the material just exposing that wire when you go and tie it off just to make sure everything is nice and secure. Get in there with your bad scissors. I'm gonna trim that away and then just kind of sweep everything back and just <clears throat> clean it up a little bit. What you can do too is you can take the kind of the blunt edge of your scissor and just kind of smash that, that stainless steel tag backwards. That way you can wrap over it and it's not sticking out. Pretty simple, nothing to it. <clears throat> That's it for the, the tail section there. We're gonna go ahead and tie this off, finish it up with a little bit of, a little bit of bone dry. UV resin. You can do super glue too if you like, but really digging that bone dry from Solar Res. All right. Now we're going to jump into our next 10 millimeter spine. Definitely helpful to uh, to fasten that second spine to the eye of the first one before you take it out of the vise. Those uh, little ones sometimes can be a little bit tricky to work with. So get that attached and then put the second one there in the jaws of the vise. Get everything locked in. Start your thread right up at the eye of the hook. <clears throat> Just as always, walk that thread backwards. And one thing that I like to do before I start adding any material at this point is I'll add just a little drop of, uh, of super glue on my thread wraps. So when I'm bringing this thread backwards on the shank, I like to cover up, <clears throat> or I like to go about as far back as I can on that, uh, on that little loop eye in the back. I've literally just left enough room for that tail section to be able to swing back and forth freely. So that super glue just kind of helps prevent those thread wraps from wanting to slide down forward. Once you get that locked in there and ready to go, now we're going to switch over to our first prop material. This is going to be Blaine Chocolate's um, Finesse Chenille. Color is going to be clear on this one. This is the medium size, which is kind of a double-sided chenille. It's kind of similar to, to Filler Flash. Um, <clears throat> Not quite as, uh, the, the fibers aren't quite as, as stiff or rigid, a um, little bit smaller diameter fibers too. So it's great for the rear sections of, uh, of game changers as a prop where you don't necessarily need a lot of lift. But what it does is it kind of helps fill up some of the space. It does two things. It, it gives you the, the lift that you need to control the taper and the fly. The other thing that it does is it allows you to take up some of the shank space. So that way you're not wrapping polar fiber along the entirety of the hook shank. <clears throat> if you did that all the way through, the fly would be really heavy. Um, so kind of serves a dual purpose there. Once you get that tied in, just like when we're Palmer and everything, gonna kind of preen those fibers backwards as you wrap, keep everything nice and clean. Kind of do your best to make sure that you're not trapping anything as you go forward. And I'll bring this almost all the way to the front of the uh, of the spine of the uh, fish spine. Sweep everything kind of backwards there. Get that secured, tied off. All right. All right. Now for the second section, we're going to stick with the with the three quarter inch polar fiber. Nothing's changing here. The other thing I like to do before I tie in these brushes, what I'll do is I'll take my scissors and just make one little snip on either side of the wire and that just removes some of that material out of the way. Gives you a nice clean tie in point, which is helpful. Don't have a lot of room here, so that just kind of allows you to secure that brush a little more easily. All right, just like we did in the back section, kind of moisten your fingers a little bit. That can help quite a bit. Just preen those fibers backwards as you wrap. Just 
two wraps, just like we did on the back one. Go ahead and kind of secure that. Pull everything backwards just to kind of clean that up just a little bit. Then you can get in there and just cut that out of the way. On these shorter brushes, really, it's not too bad. It's a, you don't tend to really trap too many fibers on these shorter ones. As we get further into the fly and we switch over to the one and a half inch brush, you're a little more likely to trap fibers. So just having a little bodkin or, or comb handy is helpful. Just to, if you do trap any fibers, you can just kind of pick them out. All right. That looks pretty good there. Kind of hard to see here at this point, <clears throat> but having that finesse chenille in there <clears throat> gave this section just a little bit more height in the body. So as we progress, you know, through five, six, seven sections, um, you'll really start to see all that kind of come together here. So once everything's tied off, just go ahead and whip finish. If you don't want to use the uh, the UV resin, certainly not necessary. Super glue would do just as good a job. I tend to like the the UV resin with this, just for the fact that um, I find sometimes when I'm working with this polar fiber or uh, crafter or any of the really soft uh, kind of wispy materials, when I use super glue, the glue tends to run up and into the materials, and then when that cures, it makes them really stiff and rigid, so that, uh, that UV resin just gives you a little bit more control. All right, so we're going to take our third 10 millimeter spine, hook that guy up. Start your thread just behind the eye, kind of bring it backwards. Gonna add just a little bit of super glue. And again, just walk that thread kind of as far back on that spine as you can. Just closing that, that gap up just a little bit. All right. And this third section here is going to be just an exact, uh, you know, repeat of uh, what we did on the previous spine. We're still going to be using the medium finesse needle, still using the three quarter inch uh, polar fiber brush. Now, the one thing that I'll do differently here on this section, if, if you can, try to use <clears throat> a few more wraps of this uh, finesse needle on this particular spine as compared to the previous one. The reason for that is if we make our prop just a little bit denser than we did on the previous section, it's going to be a little bit more rigid, so it's going to have, uh, it's going to want to stand up that polar fiber just a little bit taller than it did in the last section. Again, just kind of always keeping in mind the shape of the fly and, and always trying to work on building taper into the fly. So if you can, try to squeeze in just a couple more wraps of that finesse chenille. The other thing you can do, um, the finesse chenille is, is a lot like the filler flash and that uh, kind of has a little bit of an elastic quality to the, to the core. Um, or the string that holds it together. So when you wrap this stuff, if you pull on it, you know, and add a little bit more tension than, than maybe you did on the previous one, you'll see that those fibers will want to stand up off the shank kind of at 90 degrees and a little bit taller. So that's another little tip that you can, um, that you can use just to help you achieve a little bit better, uh, you know, height in this polar fiber section here. So get in there, tie that off. Sweep all those fibers back, just kind of clean things up just a little bit. If you got any unruly fibers there, just kind of sweep them back. It's important too with your prop, just like the polar fiber, when you 
polymer that around the shank, make sure you haven't trapped any of those fibers. If those fibers aren't standing out and away from the shank, uh, it's gonna uh, basically prevents this prop from, from doing its job. So, all right, now we're gonna get in here, same thing, just the three quarter inch polar fiber brush. Cool thing about this polar fiber is you can actually make it shorter if you need to, just to kind of help you build more taper into the fly. If you get a hold of the material and just pinch and pull it, just kind of grab it with your thumb and four fingers and just pull back real quickly. You can actually shorten those fibers up just a little bit and still maintain the, the taper in the material, which is kind of cool. That's what I've done. Kind of did it on the brush before I wrapped it, but you can get in there and just pinch and pull and that will shorten the fibers just a little bit. They don't make this smaller than three quarters of an inch, so that's just a nice little tip that you can use to, uh, to make the three quarter inch just a little bit shorter if you need to. Now on this third spine, I'll use this three quarter inch, probably at its full length. All right. Go ahead and get that tied in. And just kind of wet your fingers, preen that material backwards. Now on this third one, I'm gonna make three full turns as opposed to two, which is what we did on the previous one. And again, I'm just trying to just start to add a little bit more body. You know, I want this section to be a little bit bigger. Again, always keeping in mind the taper of the fly as you're tying it. So we'll do three full turns there. That kind of combined with, uh, with adding a little bit denser prop behind this section will kind of give the appearance that this uh, third section here is just a little bit fuller and a little bit taller than the sections behind it. Just kind of be careful too, when you're tying that tag end off, <clears throat> if it's sticking out, it can be a little bit sharp and cut your thread if you're not careful. All right, before we move on, just kind of get in there and take a look at it. If there's anything that needs to be picked out, you want to go ahead and do that now. All right, looks pretty good. And whip finish. And if you're kind of, if you just rushed it like I just did, sometimes when you go to whip finish the fly, you'll uh, trap a few fibers. So you can either get in there and, and cut them out with your scissors. You can also just kind of take a lighter and just hold it kind of close. You don't want to touch it, but just get it close to the eye. And you can just burn them right off. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> now we're ready to move on to our, uh, our hook, which is kind of in the midsection of the fly here. So at this point, we have three 10 millimeter spines in total. Now we're gonna jump into our first hook, which is gonna be an A-Rex Gamerous uh, number six. Get that in the vise there. All right, so I like to use uh, or lay down a nice kind of foundation of thread. On this one, we're gonna use a wire connection. Uh, in the video you saw before this, I did, uh, I just used one of the articulated fish spines as my articulation point. <clears throat> we had some people email in and call and ask about, uh, you know, just other ways of, of making a connection here. If, you know, that way, if you didn't wanna cut and waste one of your spines using wire is definitely a lot cheaper. Um, if you're gonna do use that, the Senyo's intruder wire is a really, really good wire. You can also use Beetle on that 
uh, I tend to like that Senyo's intruder wire. It's just it's really durable. It's not overly expensive. So just kind of cut a short piece of that. And what we're going to do is start one end right up there behind the eye of the hook. Keeping the wire right on top of the hook shank and then just kind of walk your thread back with really tight securing wraps. And you want to go just down into the bend of that hook. Just slide on your, your back section. And you always want to keep this wire right on top of the hook shank. If, if, if you can, try to avoid getting it off to one side or the other. You want to do your best to keep this wire loop kind of in line with the eye. Um, I feel like the, the fly swims a little bit better this way. The fish binds are nice to use as an articulation point. It's just I feel like it's a little bit faster. Um, I feel like this is a little bit better way of doing it. A little bit more time consuming, but in the grand scheme of things, when you're talking about a fly that maybe takes 40 minutes to tie, you know, extra couple minutes, not that big of a deal. So once you get this kind of tied in and locked in place, um, you want to snug this up so that the, the size of that loop there in the back of the hook is just large enough for that back section to swim around. You don't want it too big. If that loop is too large, or <clears throat> what can happen is when you're casting, this tail section can come all the way forward and want to foul around that hook. So <clears throat> if you close that, that loop up nice and tight, it's going to prevent that tail section from wanting to rush forward and wrap around the hook. So I'll come in here, uh, cut my wire off just behind the eye, and then wrap that in nice and tight. <clears throat> if you want to, you can double it backwards if you're afraid that it's going to pull out. I don't necessarily worry about it. I mean, there's no hooks on this back section, <clears throat> so there's really never going to be too much pressure on this tail. Even if there was, I've never had one pull out anyways. I just lay down a little bit of super glue. <clears throat> when you double that wire backwards, it just ends up making everything, you know, your hook shank and the platform that you're going to tie on a lot bulkier. So I try to avoid it. Right. Lay down some super glue. And then again, just make one more layer of really tight securing wraps going backwards. All right. <clears throat> now at this stage of the fly, we are going to <clears throat> jump up in our prop size a little bit. This is going to be the same material and still the finesse chenille, but we're going to be jumping up to the, the large size here. <clears throat> we're still going to be utilizing the three quarter inch brush. So I like to jump up to this large polar fiber brush just kind of opens it up a little bit more. I don't really want to jump to that one and a half just yet. It's still a little bit early in the fly for that, at least for this particular fly that I'm tying. You can kind of alter that and change the taper and shape of the fly just depending on maybe what forage or, or bait fish you're trying to match. This is just going to be a pretty slender, uh, relatively slender, uh, you know, kind of shiner or stone roller type profile. You know, if you want to imitate a shad, you know, it has a much broader taller profile, you can make that jump a little bit sooner. So just play around with it, do what you like. No set way to do it. All right, let's get in here. <clears throat> and every couple of turns, I like to just kind of pull on that finesse needle. Just make sure it's secured down to the hook shank. I'm going to be doing relatively tight side-by-side -side wraps here, or close rather, side-by-side -side wraps. We'll bring this up probably about the two-thirds of the way up this particular hook. I want to leave just enough room 
four, we're gonna do three wraps of uh, polar fiber here at, <clears throat> at this section of the fly here. So get in there, we're gonna tie that off. Just like always, just kind of clean things up a little bit. And just check before you keep going, just if there's anything trapped, just kind of pull them out. All right, that looks good. The other thing that's worth mentioning too, when you're working with these brushes, <clears throat> they're not always gonna be exactly three quarters of an inch or one and a half inches as they're labeled. They're gonna be pretty close. Sometimes, you know, when you open up the pack, you know, they come with two brushes, take a look at them, you know, Sometimes maybe you'll notice one is, you know, slightly denser, maybe slightly larger than the other. So <clears throat> one thing you can do is, you know, at this point in the fly, as we're progressing forward, we're trying to start building, you know, a little bit, a little bit more height than the fly. Take a look at both of your brushes. You know, that's kind of what I just did. You know, I noticed that one of these is just a little bit shorter and maybe just a little bit sparser. So <clears throat> By using that other one that's a little bit fuller, it seems to be just a little bit longer. That's going to give me a little bit more height, you know. So that in combination with the prop is going to, even though we're using the same brush, is going to, you know, you're going to see that in your fly. Small little detail, you know, is it going to make any difference to the fish? Probably not, but it, uh, I can sleep better at night knowing that I did it. All right. Kind of trim away some of the fibers, exposing that stainless steel core. I'm going to lock that in. Now on these brushes that utilize a stainless steel core, I don't really worry about laying down any glue. You know, whether it's UV resin or super glue, these things are, are really, really durable. As long as when you're wrapping those, they're bound tightly down to the hook shank, there's not a whole lot that's going to pull these out. So. I also don't want to make a mess and get any resin or glue all over these fibers. I want to keep them nice and soft. All right, so <clears throat> just like we did <clears throat> previously, just going to kind of preen those fibers backwards, and we're going to do three complete turns here. All right, and again, when you tie these off, it just kind of helps just take a second, pull some of those fibers out of the way, exposing that core. You know, if you can lock this material or tie it off by just that wire core, it's going to be a lot more secure. It's not going to be as bulky. If you expose enough of it, sometimes you can fold it backwards like that too, and then tie it down, and that'll kind of eliminate that little burr that we had earlier. So trim that off. Just take a look at it again before we move forward. You know, if there's anything that's trapped or matted down, just go ahead and pick them out. Looks good. All right, tie this guy off. Gonna add a little bit of resin. All right, we're good to go. Now, if you take a look at this before we move on, as you can see, even though this was a three quarter inch brush, <clears throat> you can see it's just a little bit taller and a little bit larger than the sections previous. So like I said, you get two to a package, just kind of look at them. If one's sparser, shorter than the other one, 
kind of favor that one for the rear sections of the fly and then that little bit denser, maybe longer one, uh, use that a little bit farther forward in the fly. You know, so between that and then being able to kind of do that pinch and pull technique by shortening the fibers, you can take that one size of three quarter inch brush and achieve, you know, a really nice taper. So, all right, that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna jump into our next section, which is gonna be a 15 millimeter spine. Start our thread at the eye, go ahead and walk it back, trim our tag. Add just a little bit of super glue right there towards the back of the towards the back of the shank, right where that loop eye is. That'll give our thread just a little bit more traction so we can walk it as far back as possible. <clears throat> All right, now we're going to, at this point, we're going to switch. Um, we're going to switch our, uh, our brush size just a little bit. So uh, we're going to be still using the same prop. This is going to be the large finesse chenille. Uh, but I think on this one, I'm going to jump over to the uh, one and a half inch size. So, but first, we're going to tie in our finesse chenille. that locked in, advance your thread forward. At this portion of the fly, we're going to bring this prop material almost all the way forward. We're going to leave just enough room to uh, kind of allow us to make <clears throat> two wraps of that, uh, that one and a half inch polar fiber brush. So get in there and tie that off, clean things up a little bit. Make sure nothing's trapped. All right, looks good. <laughs> On this protection, particular section too, I'll be able to kind of better illustrate that pinch and pull technique to trim the, uh, the polar fiber here. <clears throat> Once we get this wrapped and tied off, you'll see that, you know, these fibers are, we're not gonna use them at their full length, you know, not, not yet anyways, so. Get that locked in nice and tight. All right. Now, as you go up and get into these longer brushes, those fibers are going to have the tendency to want to get trapped a little bit more. So just kind of be patient with it. If you notice that anything is getting trapped, just go ahead and pick it out. We're not going to make too many wraps. You know, like I said, we're only going to make two full wraps here. So we can wait until we get it all tied in and tied off and then pick it out. All right, so that was one. Yeah. And there's no dead set rule too. So I said two wraps, I'm just kind of estimating. So if, if you kind of get up to the front of the eye there and you're thinking, well, I could really use one more. I think, you know, it would just look, it would just look better. If I did one more wrap, then go ahead and just add one. It's not gonna hurt anything. 
you know, like I said, with these brushes, there's always going to be just a little bit of variance. So sometimes you need to make an adjustment. Go ahead and clean our wraps up. And then at this point, we can get in there and kind of pull apart all of those fibers that got matted down or trapped. Polar fiber flying around everywhere. All right, that looks pretty good. Sweep those back. Go ahead and tie off our thread here. Give that a cure. All right, now before we move on, kind of just get all this polar fiber sweep backwards. As you can see, <clears throat> this one and a half inch brush at its full length is just too long. You know, these tip fibers are extended almost halfway back into our fly here. So what we can do to trim those up a little bit, not trim them necessarily, but make them shorter, is just get in there, like I said earlier, with your thumb and forefinger and just get a good tight grip on them and then just pull really quickly. And by doing that, you'll kind of tear the fibers, making them shorter while still kind of maintaining that, that taper and a little bit of variance in the uh, material length. But really, really easy to do. Doesn't take too long. You know, if you need to take the fly out of the vise, And just do a little bit at a time, you know, take one kind of pass all the way around the fly and then look at it. You know, if it still looks a little bit long to you, get in there and just trim it, make it a little bit shorter. If you're OCD at all, you could spend the rest of your day sitting here picking at that material, but <clears throat> and we can do more later, you know, just just get it close. <clears throat> All right, now we're going to jump into our next 15 millimeter spine. Go ahead and hook that up. Start our thread up front, walk it all the way back, cut our tag. Just a little bit of glue. And again, just close that gap up, bring that thread all the way back, <clears throat> leaving just enough of an opening for that section behind it to be able to swing and move around freely. That way you're not hindering any movement in the fly. All right. All right, we're now going to switch prop materials. We're gonna jump into the filler flash. So we're getting close to that portion of the fly that we're now getting, you know, we want a little bit more height. We're starting to get close to the shoulder of, uh, of the fly. So we wanna build a little bit more height. This filler flash is probably about twice the overall uh, you know, diameter or width of, the, of that finesse chenille. So this is gonna help. We're still gonna be utilizing that one and a half inch brush, but just by changing our prop, um, it's gonna help us start building a little bit more uh, height in the pattern here. So nothing different the way you tie this in and work with it. Same as the filler flash or the uh, finesse chenille, sorry. Get that tied in and bring your thread forward. And just make kind of tight side-by-side -side wraps. Kind of 
kind of pulling those fibers backwards as you move forward. If you want, every three or four wraps, just kind of give that a little bit of a little pull just to make sure that it's bound tightly to the hook. All right. Just like we did on the last section there, we're going to leave just enough room for two wraps of uh, polar fiber. Get in there and tie this off. Try not to trap too many fibers. Kind of pull everything back. All right, looks pretty good. Take our one and a half inch brush. Trim some of those fibers away, just exposing that, that core there. Get that locked in real good. Kind of sweep these fibers backwards as you're wrapping them. That'll kind of help, kind of prevent uh, trapping as many fibers, but just kind of take your time with it. Every time you make that full rotation, just stop, sweep all those fibers back. And with these longer ones, sometimes you need to kind of pick these out as you go. Can help to kind of get in there with the with your bodkin and just kind of peel away some of those fibers exposing that core get a nice clean tie in point or tie off point perfect example right there if you're not careful you can cut your thread on that little burr that's left from when you trim your brush off. All right, looks good. Picked out any trap fibers. Go ahead and finish this off with some bone dry. Just like we did in the last section, you know, if those fibers are just a little bit too long. Just kind of get in there with your thumb and forefinger. Just kind of pinch and just pull real quickly. You don't want to you don't want to grab too much of this at a time. Just, just kind of be patient with it. Just grab a little bit at a time and just kind of gradually work your way around the fly. Like I said, you don't have to get it perfect just yet. You know, once we finish the fly, you can get back there later and, and finish it, but all right. That's gonna be close enough for now. Now we're gonna jump up to our front hook here. Don't need to use anything real specific hook wise. I mean, one thing I do look for as far as hook properties is I, is I want, uh, on this particular pattern anyways, I want a relatively short shank hook and a wide, really wide gap hook. So having a really wide gap, it's gonna do a couple things. 
It's going to help kill the fly. Um, on this particular pattern too, I'm going to be using a, um, a Gamagatsu SL12S short. Um, you can use either a, uh, you know, anything between a one and a three aught. That sounds really large, but that hook is really, uh, you know, all hooks are just so different. But that uh, that Gamagatsu SL12S short and the three aught really isn't that large of a hook. You know, I'm going to be putting in some body tubing in this particular pattern. Um, just right up at the head before we finish it. So if you're not going to use the body tubing in the head of the fly, you know, you can get away with the one or a, a two odd, no problem. But, you know, any short shank wide gap hook will do. This one's also got a little bit heavier wire, so I don't need to, you know, add any lead wire down here in my bend to help kill the fly. Just the overall mass and weight of this hook, size of the gap is enough to kill everything. So starter thread. Nice thread base all the way back. Go just down into the bend and then we'll bring it forward back up to the eye. On that return trip up to the eye, I kind of just did open spiral wraps just to add a little bit of texture and roughness to the, to the shank, which will kind of help our wire get a little bit better traction when we secure it to the hook. Nothing different here, pretty much same, same way of uh, locking this in as we did on our, on our first hook. All right, kind of bring that down in, just, just down into the bend a little bit, and then bring that thread kind of back up on top. Thread our wire through the uh, through the eye. Bring it right back up on top of the hook shank. And again, just kind of snug that up so it's just large enough that the fly can kind of swing freely back and forth. But I'm going to close that up as much as possible. As far as figuring out, you know, how far down into the bend you want to go when you tie in that wire, really all you're trying to achieve is um, you want that loop to be as close to in line with the eye of the hook as possible. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're tying that wire in. All right. Once we've got that closed up, bring our thread back all the way forward, right up to the eye. Cut this wire off. Nice and easy with your thread wraps once you get close to the butt ends of that wire so it doesn't cut your thread. And we'll just lay a little bit of super glue right on top of those wraps. Just kind of help hold everything in place. It's helpful too if you uh, Use these little hair clips to kind of hold your fly back up and out of the way. You can also sometimes um, put your rear hook inside your material clip and just, just to hold it up out of the way so it's not fighting and getting in your way as you finish the fly. So, all right, I'll cover up that glue, real tight wraps, walking backwards here. All right, first thing we're gonna tie in is some, uh, some filler flash. You're using that <clears throat> SL12S short hook. We're going to want to bring this <clears throat> filler flash <clears throat> almost to uh, kind of just before the point of the hook, just to kind of give you a, a reference point. 
We want this, this particular prop to be really dense, so we're going to do really, really tight side-by-side -side wraps, kind of squeezing in as many turns of this material as you can between your tie-in point and the, uh, the point of the hook. All right, now at this stage of the fly, <clears throat> if you want to add some pec fins, this would be the time to do it. You know, <clears throat> and if you want to, before you tie in your pec fins, you know, you're, if you want to add, you know, a turn or two of, of polar fiber uh, over this filler flash, you can. I'm just going to tie in my fins. We're going to go right in, tie in the body tubing, and then we're just going to finish the head of the fly with polar fiber. So <clears throat> only reason for doing that, I, I want to try to keep the amount of polar fiber to a minimum. You know, that polar fiber brush up front and the longer length is going to be enough to kind of cover up, cover all that up. So just by removing a couple of turns of that polar fiber, just going to make the fly a little bit lighter and easier to cast. All right. So like I said, the pec fins, if you want to tie those in, that is completely optional. I'm going to go ahead and add them in. This is just a uh, whiting hen saddle. When you tie these in, you want to turn the, the, the concave portion of the feather out away from the body of the fly. That way those, those fins kind of flare out just a little bit. All right, kind of get that tied in. As far as length on these guys, I mean, <clears throat> you can kind of do whatever you think looks looks good to you. You know, I want the tip of this saddle is kind of ends right at the end of my uh, previous 15 millimeter spine there. So <clears throat> kind of play around with it. There's no set, you know, length that it has to be, but that just kind of is what looks good to me right this moment. So, all right, just make sure they line up. So this filler flash kind of serves as a prop for our for our pec fins. Now at this point, I'm going to do something just a little bit different than the original. I'm going to add some um, quarter inch body tubing to the head of this fly here. Not really necessary, but I feel like it pushes a little bit more water, gives the fly a little bit more of an aggressive swim. The other thing that it does is it's going to cover up the tie-in points um, of our pec fins that way they don't get cut or pulled out. So it's going to make that step of the fly a little bit more durable too. So I'm going to kind of serve two purposes. Again, this is the quarter inch in clear. Go ahead and just kind of light the ends there just to or melt the ends of that tubing just so it doesn't fray and unravel on you. Before I slide this all the way on, what I like to do is just because that body tubing is really slick, I'll just add a little bit of super glue around my thread wraps and then I'll push that body tubing up and over that, which will help keep that body tubing in place when we go to go to turn it inside out. So slide that over. Maybe add just a half a dozen uh, you know nice tight securing wraps. A little long. All right. Now, before you push this backwards and turn it inside out, you're going to want to melt this other end too, just so it doesn't completely unravel on you. All right. So we're going to take that, push it back over itself, essentially turning the material inside out. If you haven't worked with body tubing before, we have a, uh, a tutorial on our YouTube channel that you can check out. Kind of shows me explaining how to uh, how to work with it. All right, now that we got that turned inside out, I'm going to repeat the uh, the super glue step here right on top of these thread wraps again, just to give the uh, body tubing something to kind of adhere to. 
so it doesn't slip and slide around. All right. Go ahead and whip finish that, tie it off. Add just a little bit more super glue. Fold this backwards, just like that. So that's going to pro provide, that body tubing is going to provide some support and lift to this uh, kind of last section of polar fiber that we're tying in here. It's also going to protect the saddles, which is really, really nice. Saddles look great or the pec fins look great. Um, I find that, you know, sometimes every once in a while you'll get, you know, a fish and it just has it in its mouth the right place and they get cut out or, or by a tooth or, or plucked out. So having that body tubing folded back over them tends to uh, make those pec fins last just a little bit longer. So now we're going to finish the fly. If you want to do it in all white or all, you know, whatever color you're using, you can. I'm just going to uh, kind of use a contrasting color. This is the, the pink color of the polar fiber brush. <clears throat> Still the one and a half inch length. Start our thread. All right. We maybe have a third of the hook shank left at this point here, so we're just going to do, um, you know, side by side wraps with this polar fiber all the way up to the eye, and then tie it off. Always want to be sweeping those fibers backwards just so you're not trapping anything. You know, every so often, just kind of stop, get in there with your bodkin and just kind of pick away any fibers that are trapped. You can take this polar fiber all the way up to the eye. You really don't need to leave any room for anything. Um, if you're going to add eyes, you can. Um, we'll talk about that here in, in just a second once we get this tied off here. All right, try to expose that wire core there if you can. Secure that in place. All right. This point of brush is helpful too. Bodkin's not real great at this stage just because you have that body tubing behind all this polar fiber and it tends to kind of get stuck in the tubing a little bit. But Now before we tie off, just again, just kind of just take a second, look over everything, make sure nothing's trapped, make sure everything's kind of situated the way you want it. That's going to work for right now. All right, get this guy tied off and then we'll talk a little bit about options for finishing the fly. So at this point, more or less, you are done. We have a completed fly. 
Um, you know, there's still uh, just a little bit of trimming and, and kind of preening to do here with these longer fibers. But <clears throat> at this point, your, your fly is complete. Um, now, as far as eyes, there's a lot of different options that you can do. If you want to use jungle cock, you can. You know, ProTube makes some really great imitation uh, synthetic jungle cock that's really fairly inexpensive and really durable. Um, you can also use their, they also have a 3D kind of tab eye that we like to use a lot. Um, generally, I'll use, you know, either that imitation jungle cock or one of the, the tab eyes that ProTube makes. On the body tubing versions, um, you know, the other option is just to take a 3D eye and just, and just glue it right onto the, uh, on the side of the, the head here. So on the patterns that have uh, that body tubing incorporated into the head, that's one thing I like to do on a lot of my game changers. One of the other benefits to having that body tubing up underneath, you know, your, your final, you know, portion of the fly, whether it's, you know, polar fiber or crafter or, or any really material. Nice thing about having that body tubing is there is it gives your eyes something to rest against. So if you are just going to take a 3D eye and, and glue it right in place here, you know, on the side, you know, I just kind of get in there with, with a little bit of, uh, you know, super glue or, or UV, whatever you want to use. You can't collapse that head, you know, you won't smash your profile. So, just taking those eyes and gluing them up against that body tubing kind of holds them in place and you won't smash your head completely flat. When you do that, you know, you'll glue your 3D eyes on either side and then I'll just take some UV and just kind of go around the eyes and fill in any gaps just to kind of lock them in place. And then that also kind of ends up giving you kind of that perfect, you know, kind of wedge or uh, your kind of arrow type shape to the head. <clears throat> so that makes it really easy. <clears throat> So like I said, that's kind of up to you. Do whatever you want with the eyes. We're not going to finish this one uh, right here. I haven't really made up my mind what I want to do, but <clears throat> more or less, that's the polar fiber game changer in a nutshell. If you have any questions about this pattern, uh, feel free to give us a call or email at the shop. <clears throat> We're going to be posting a uh, pictured step-by-step -step two uh, over on the blog that you can check out. So thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.